66 people a day are making the move to San Antonio, Texas, and in this video, I'm dropping answers to the top five questions we've been getting from folks all across the country. Chances are, they're the exact same questions you've been wanting answers to, so stay tuned, because we're getting into it right now. What's going on family? This is Greg Foster with Market Boss at eXp Realty right here in San Antonio, Texas. If this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living, working, eating, chilling, and playing in San Antonio, Texas, then click the subscribe button and tap that little bell so you're notified every time we drop a new video. And my team and I, we're getting calls every day from folks just like you looking into the Alamo City. So if you're thinking about moving or relocating anywhere in the San Antonio area, then give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email however you want to get a hold of us we've got your back we're moving to san antonio texas okay now let's get into it number one is crime so this is probably the most frequently asked questions that we get from folks who are looking at relocating to san antonio and i'm talking about everybody young people young families folks with kids empty nesters and even people looking at moving into retirement everybody really wants to know what's the crime like in san antonio greg is this area safe is that area safe where is it safe to live in San Antonio? Is it even safe to live in San Antonio? Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I always do my absolute best to provide a ton of value, and I always make the promise that I'm gonna keep it 100% real with everybody. I started doing my research on this thing because I was gonna put together some stats and some data and really back this thing up with some information, but what I found with what I was looking at out there is that everything is basically all across the map. I read this one recent Forbes article where it was talking about San Antonio with all of the growth that it's been experiencing, crime was way down, and it was one of the safest big cities in the country. And then I read another article about the top five safest cities in Texas and how San Antonio didn't even make the list. Come find out they were comparing a bunch of cities that had populations for like 10,000, 20,000, less than 50,000 people. And I'm like, that's not apples to apples. And then they didn't even include any of the little cities or some of the major suburbs that really make up a big chunk of the San Antonio metro. It's just all over the place depending on what they're measuring. It really made me think back to like a couple years ago when I went to one of those housing forecasts and they brought in one of the top economists in the state of Texas. His name was Mark Dodser and he said something that always stuck with me. He said, if you torture the data long enough, you'll get it to say whatever you want it to say. And I was like, hmm. But to answer everybody's question, Yes, we have crime in San Antonio. How bad is it? It's actually on par with what you should probably expect from a top 10 US city with millions of people in it. But the true question behind everything that people really want the answer to is, is it safe to live in San Antonio? And the answer is yes. Now, are there rough areas here? Yeah, absolutely, there's some rough areas here. But I mean, that's stuff that you're gonna find no matter what kind of city that you're checking out. I talk a lot in my other videos about how my family and I, you know, we moved here about six years ago with my wife and our two daughters who at the time, they were six and nine. And safety was a really important factor for us. Fortunately, again, you know, we had spent a lot of time vacationing out here. We were pretty familiar with the city. And we've been all over San Antonio, all different parts of the day, the night, touristy areas, places that locals tend to hang out. And all I can tell you is that my family and I, we felt safe everywhere that we've went here so far. Number two is diversity. An overwhelming majority of the people who are reaching out to us really want to know what's the diversity like here in San Antonio. San Antonio has such a rich history of culture and a true live and let live type of spirit out here. And there's a lot of things that contribute to that. Every year, nearly 40 million people visit San Antonio and not just from across the country, but really from around the world. And it's because of all those visitors that all of us out here in San Antonio are really used to welcoming people to our city. And in fact, it's one of the things we hear from a lot of people who come to visit San Antonio is that they're just super surprised with how nice and how welcoming all the people are here. Even in the super crowded touristy areas like downtown and on the Riverwalk in the summer times when it's extra hot outside, people still say excuse me when they bump into you down there. I mean really if you think about it, it's kind of amazing that more people don't fall into the river with this crowded as it gets down there. But that just speaks to the fact that the people here kind of just allow each other the space to just be. And that's part of the reason why a lot of the visitors, they just keep coming back and why a lot of people are really making the decision to move here. San Antonio truly is a cultural melting pot. I mean, you can walk through the city and on any given day, you can probably hear at least half a dozen languages spoken. I've even had people ask me like, hey, Greg, do I need to know how to speak Spanish when I move down there? And the answer is no. But guess what? It'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> 
Me personally, I took like three years of Spanish in high school. I lived in New Mexico for five and a half years. Now I've been in San Antonio for six years. And after all of that, I know probably enough Spanish to realize that I don't know enough Spanish. So if you're just like me and all you can do is count to 10, you're probably gonna be fine. One of the other main drivers for all the diversity out here in San Antonio is that we're affectionately referred to as Military City USA. I mean, we've got four military bases here with Lackland Air Force Base, Randolph Air Force Base, Camp Bullis, and Fort Sam Houston. The military presence here is woven so deeply into the fabric of our community that even if it weren't for anything else, that alone would account for a lot of the cultural acceptance and the collaborative vibe that you'll find all throughout San Antonio. The military brings in all kinds of people with all kinds of backgrounds from all kinds of nationalities and ethnic groups, all kinds of belief systems and religious faiths, and all levels of social and economic statuses. And not only that, but they also set a really good example of what it means to truly work together. These separate bases and these separate branches of the armed forces all come together to form one ginormous military installation, and that's Joint Base San Antonio. And that spirit is echoed all throughout the rest of the city. When people ask me about the diversity in this city, it's clear to me that what they really want to know is, are they going to be accepted here? Will they have the opportunity to find a community of people that they can fit in with? Will their kids get the benefit of having the opportunity to be exposed to other people in other cultures and other thought processes? Can San Antonio really offer me that? And I'm here to tell you that after living here for six years, the answer is yes. Number three is the weather. We get a lot of questions about what the weather's like down here, and that goes beyond just asking about how hot the summers are out here. Super hot, by the way. We found that people really want to know about the seasons, what it's like throughout the year down here, and really how it compares to where they're moving from. One of the best things about San Antonio from a weather perspective is that because of where it's located in the state, we actually tend to miss a lot of severe weather that you find in different parts of Texas. Further north in like the Dallas-Fort Worth area is where you tend to see a lot of the really crazy thunderstorms with large size hail and a higher concentration of tornadoes. And then two hours east to San Antonio, you've got Houston, which is probably one of the most flood-prone cities in all of Texas. And that's really tough given that every single year they get a lot of rain from all of the hurricanes down in the Gulf of Mexico. One of our clients moving here from New York actually sent me a text asking about it. Hey, Brother Greg, hope you and your family are okay and prayers send your way through Laura. I saw on local news that San Antonians are evacuating, highways backed up for hours, cars trying to leave. Fortunately, you can't believe everything you see on the news. And at the time, San Antonio was actually the city that everyone else was evacuating to. I looked outside and it was like a bright, beautiful, sunshiny day. I even took this picture real quick from the front window of my home office and sent it to her just to show her that everything was cool out here. Now we get a lot of questions about the seasons out here in San Antonio and yes, we do have all four seasons. There's fall, spring, summer one, and summer two. Number four, is the wildlife. Now the way some of y'all ask me about the wildlife out here, I swear it's like y'all must be at home watching National Geographic. Now we don't really have anything crazy going on out here in San Antonio. I guess the main thing you have to worry about more than anything else is just the bugs out here. Mostly in like the residential and the suburban areas, you've really got to keep an eye out for wasps or wasp nests that they end up building around your house. And then if you're going to like any of the touristy areas where there's gonna be a lot of food, usually you'll see some bees that are hanging out around there and especially around trash cans if they're not covered up. Now bees usually don't mess with you as long as you don't mess with them, but nobody wants to deal with a hornet's nest somewhere on their property. And those nests can get really big too if you don't take care of them. Fortunately, you go to hardware stores like Lowe's or Home Depot and they've got this spray that shoots out like 20 feet away so you can really stand back and get those things knocked down. But the flying bugs, aren't really the only thing you gotta worry about out here. The fire ants is really what's gonna trip you out. These fire ants out here are no joke, and it's like one day, no ants, and then if it rains overnight, or if you're just not paying attention, the next day you can wake up and you've got this like ant farm, mound, hotel, mansion looking thing somewhere in your yard. And I found out firsthand, it was like the first day after I had moved to San Antonio, and I'm out in my backyard getting things watered up because it's summertime, and then all of a sudden, my whole left foot just kept catches on fire. I looked down and it was just one little fire ant chewing on my pinky toe. I tried hitting that thing with the jet stream from the water hose and it would not let go. I legit had to reach down and like flick this thing to get it off of my foot. Next thing I know, half my foot is all swole up. It's itching and burning like crazy for the next few days. So moral of the story is make sure you stay stocked up on ant killer and spread that mess around your yard every couple of months or so. But actually I tell you what, when it comes to wildlife out here, we really do have some good things that are going for us out in San Antonio. In the springtime, the hummingbirds out here start showing up and chasing each other around. And so those things are always really cool to see because you're usually here one second and gone the next. I can't tell you how many times I like try to grab my wife or kids and be like, oh, hey, look, check out this hummingbird. And then they're like, and I'm like, man, 
just missed it. And then in some of the neighborhoods out here in San Antonio, usually the larger ones with like half acre lots, or if you get like further north into the city, there's white tailed deer that are running around, even in a big metro area like San Antonio. I mean, you wake up in the morning, you get your cup of coffee, you look outside the window, and you got deer staring back at you. Number five is taxes. Now I know I've touched on this one in a lot of my other videos, but this one is still one of the topics that we get a lot of questions about. This video that I did right here talks a lot about the cost of living in San Antonio and takes a really deep dive into the tax situation out here. Suffice it to say that because there's no state income tax out here in Texas, we end up paying a little bit more when it comes to consumption and our property taxes. Sales tax in San Antonio is a little over 8% and that's where the city makes its money when it comes to all of the shopping and the fun and the dining and everything that you're doing out there in San Antonio when you come to visit or when you live here. And while the sales tax isn't really that big a deal, you won't really notice it while you're out there having a good time and buying stuff. Where you really are going to start to feel it is when you look at buying a home in San Antonio. The metro area out here is made up of a number of like municipalities and suburbs and little towns that are sprinkled around both within city limits and on the outskirts of San Antonio. And depending on where you're looking, they could have different tax rates depending on the jurisdiction and the municipality as well. Two homes at the exact same price point can have a difference in payment of anywhere from like $150 a month to $300 a month depending on where it's located because of the property taxes and that's just something that you kind of have to think about and be mindful of when you're out scouting neighborhoods here in San Antonio. Fortunately though when you compare the cost of living to different parts of the country and even the rest of Texas San Antonio is still super affordable and people are really surprised at how far their money can go especially if they're coming from some of the east coast or the west coast markets where the prices tend to be a lot higher out there and if you're a military veteran with a disability rating chances are you're going to qualify for a pretty good sized discount on your property taxes and in some cases taking your property taxes all the way down to zero if you qualify as 100% disabled. Now if there's something I didn't cover for you if you've got any other questions about moving to San Antonio my team and I we're getting calls from people every single day and we absolutely love it so if you're thinking about moving or relocating anywhere in the San Antonio area then give us a call shoot us a text send us an email however you want to get a hold of us we've got your back when moving to San Antonio Texas.